Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Nick from Top Notch Sports, and this is the 2024 Interior Offensive Lineman Prospects Scouting Report. Okay, we do this yearly. I go down every single one of the prospects. I scout and rank them at the end of the video. I have two grade scales. Okay, I got the my personal analysis, which is my opinion, and my unbiased grade scale, which ranks guys based on how many points they earn in their grade scale. We'll go over all of that throughout this video. If it's your first time tuning into a top-notch sports video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We put a lot of effort into our things. And you guys know, okay, we kind of linger out during the regular season. But when it's the off-season time, especially when it's around this time of the year, the NFL draft time where people are ranking their guys, I'll tell you something, okay? You're going to get an unbiased, ranking from me okay it might not be what everyone else wants you to think but that's not what we're supposed to do our job is not to just go with groupthink. it's to give you what we see on the tape and i promise you my rankings have always been and always will be totally different than everyone else's and not only that okay i'm gonna hit on some guys that no one else is talking about i'm gonna absolutely swing for the messes fences and miss on some guys okay you're gonna see both so Hey, that's what the scouting life is. I'm all in. I'm not going to play the safe game. I'm going to go and swing for the fences. So here we go. Let's see what we got. So here's our grade scale, okay? There's there's a few things that I look at and I grade on for the interior offensive lineman and offensive tackles for that matter, but that will be the next video. So what are the five things? I look at run blocking, pass blocking, their toughness, IQ, and footwork, okay? So run blocking, we all know what that is. Pass blocking, we all know what that is. Toughness. I want to see you, are you blocking until the whistle? Are you, you know, are you trying to run these people into the ground? Are you playing tough or are you just giving up? Okay, when you don't have to block somebody, are you just not blocking somebody? When the play is going the other way, are you just giving up on your block? I want to see people block until that freaking whistle blows. IQ, do you know how to pick up blitz stunts? Uh, do you know how to pick up blitzing linebackers, edge rushers, corners, safeties, okay? Do you see that? Are you able to pass off a guy to your guard and pick up the tackle or vice versa, pack it, pass it off to your tackle and pick, pick it up as the guard? Okay, these are all really important things. Do you have the IQ to see those blitzing players or the defensive stunts? And last but not least, footwork. Are you getting into your kick step? Okay, how are you doing with your footwork? Uh, you know, are you sealing off the fenders? Are you be able to get to the right spot? Um, you know, are you slipping? Are you falling on the ground all the time? Are you getting thrown back? Okay, these are all things that are being looked at in my scouting report. And again, my grade scale will take all of these into consideration, give you a grade based on those five categories. And then I may agree or disagree with what my grade scale says. So at the very end of the video, you see my personal analysis. But you'll be able to see my grade scale very shortly as we go in to each player. So this is after complete analysis, after film study, and the combine. Here's my track record, okay? Here's what I've done over since 2021. I've been really deep diving into interior offense alignment. Again, some hits, some misses, right? I mean, you can see it right down the line. And again, you're not going to see a very, very true track record like this by any other scout. Why? Because they do look pretty horrible. Okay, you look at this, it looks pretty bad. You're like, how the hell do you have Creed Humphrey at six in 2021? You know, he's better than Wyatt Davis and Ben Cleveland. How dare you do that? He may be the best. Well, guess what? If you go and you look at Daniel Jeremiah, or you go and you look at Bucky Brooks, or you go and look at, you know, Mel Kuyper, you know, Creed Humphrey might have been 12, but they don't show you this anymore. They don't want you to see this. They don't show you in-depth breakdown per each position because it's even uglier than this. I'm very open. I'm honest. I'll show you exactly how it went down, okay? And again, I've missed a lot, but I've also hit on some guys. And you know what? I'm willing to a little bit swing for the fences a little bit more with interior offensive line because they usually don't get their flowers anyway. And you know what? I'm going to take the guy that's going to, you know, block until the whistle blows, show me a little bit of toughness and grittiness. And then a guy that, you know, he's just kind of, he has really good technique and, you know, but he doesn't block until the whistle blows. i rather see all out effort. Okay. Of course, technique matters, but I want to see someone that's willing to fight when they face adversity at the next level. They're going to give me everything they got. That's what I want to say. So going back from 2021. Right, Elijah Vera Tucker, Landon, Dick, Landon Dickerson. I think those are two pretty good damn picks. Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey. Remember, they actually got drafted a little bit later too. 
Um, you know, and I was like, what? I mean, they were my top guy on the board, and you had all kinds of guys getting drafted over them. You know, I know for a fact I gave the Chiefs high, high, high grades on their draft pick because they got these guys way later than I was anticipating. So Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey, great draft pick, turned out to be really good. And again, it also matters about situation. Do these guys have a spot given to them? You know, is it a good situation to be in? Do they have good offensive line coaches or not? That can completely, you know, reroute a career, okay, which can be crazy. So really that year, I mean, those are all the guys that you really want to talk about there. I mean, there's a few other guys that are, you know, big guys too that have done pretty good or pretty bad. But those are the 11 guys I scouted that I kept on this list. 2022, right? I made 13 made my list. I had a few more guys I scattered, but I only put 13 on here. T Tyler Linnebaum, one. I still like that. Kenyon Green, two. He's been okay. Justin Schaefer never really panned out so far, at least. Tyler Smith. I had Cole Strains pretty high. I remember they said that, you know, the Patriots really reached on him. I didn't think it was as big of a reach as everyone was saying, to be honest with you, because I really had him as, you know, pretty good compared to other people. But other people had him around like eight, nine. I had him at five. Dylan Parham, the Raiders got him. I, I still like him. Zion Johnson, I was lower on him than most people. He's been pretty all right so far. And et cetera, et cetera, you go down the list. Again, a lot of you guys don't know how half these people even are. Last but not least, last year, Osiris Torrance was my number one. I still liked him. I know he had a pretty okay year. Andrew Voorhees, number two, had an ACL injury. I would still put him at number two because I feel like his tape was freaking amazing. We'll see how he does this year. You know, Coming off that injury, hopefully he can do pretty dang good. Nick Broker, three, went really late to the Bills, then he got released. Or he might have actually been undrafted, or it went to the Bills in general, got released. Now he's with somebody else. I love this dude's tape. Uh, we'll see. I mean, you know how many guys are undrafted or late picks that turn out to be pretty damn good linemen? Okay, Nick Broker, I think, is going to be one of those guys. Luke Weipler, Ricky Stromberg, John Michael Schmitz. I was way lower on him than most people were. I don't think he had that great of a year last year, so it's kind of coming true for me. Steve Avila, I was higher on him than most people. Uh, I think he had actually a pretty okay year. Tipman, you know, Olsugun, uh, you know, Emil Ikior, Jared Patterson, Jackson Kirkland. Jackson Kirkland, I still remember to this day, wasn't a phenomenal interior offensive lineman in my opinion, but he had that versatility. He could play offensive tackle and interior offensive lineman. So, you know, he could also be that guy that can stay around the NFL for a few years because he can play multiple positions. So that's my track record over the last three years. You know, I had some hits, some misses. It's going to happen. Uh, if you like what you've seen so far with this, then, hey, maybe you think that I'll do a pretty good job this year. Uh, if you don't like what you've seen so far, then maybe I'll do a pretty sucky job. It, you know, everyone's going to bash and hate, and, you know, some people are going to love it, but I'm going to be upfront and honest, unlike a lot of other people. So let's hop into this thing now. First guy, according to the grade scale, earned a 77 as a grade. That means he earned 77% of the possible points. Troy Fatanu, I think is how you pronounce it. If I said it wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, what is he? Six foot three, 317, 34 and a half inch reach. Okay, here's his notes. This kid played left tackle on the film I watched, which shows that he's versatile. I do believe you will transition to offensive guard at the next level. There are a few things I like about his game. First, he is a really good in the run game. You know, which, you know, shows that there's plenty of tape of him pulling as a tackle. He was able to get around and pick up his guy perfectly every single time. Again, the tape I watched with him playing as an offensive tackle on the left side to the left tackle, uh, I didn't really get to watch a lot of tape of him playing guard. I don't even know if he honestly played guard in college. But I do think he would be better suited at playing offensive guard, especially at the next level. In the run game, he also demonstrates his toughness of footwork. The area where his game struggles a bit is his pass protection on the edge. He seems like he can get thrown around a little bit and become off balance against, you know, really strong edge rushers. This is exactly why I would use him as a guard at the next level. He does do a good job identifying blitzes and picking them up on tape. Besides getting thrown around occasionally, his tape is pretty solid. So again, would I want this guy to be versing in Michael Micah Parsons at the next level? No. Nick Bosa? No. A Khalil Mack? No. Why? Because I do feel like a really good, strong edge rusher can throw him back and get him off balance and beat him a lot as an offensive tackle. On the inside, we all know that you have a little bit more protection. You got a center and a tackle right next to you. So he'll be better in those situations. Uh, and it's not as much one-on-one -on -one as a guard as it is a tackle. So again, I think some of his weaknesses would be hidden. His strengths, right? Versatility. He can play interior offensive lineman or an offensive tackle. So a team that, you know, may want a guy that is going to be pretty damn good and can play a little bit of both, maybe an emergency situation switch. Here's your guy. Teams love versatility, and this guy offers that. Really good in the run blocking, good at pulling, seals defenders really well, which, again, I can't say about a lot of these guys this year. Good toughness on tape, really good IQ, pick up, you know, blitzing defenders, really able to identify the blitzing guy, pass off guys, pick up the right guy. 
Weightness, gets thrown off balance. Again, I feel like this would be hidden if he's playing interior offensive line at the next level, which would be offensive guard. Here's his breakdown. I'm not going to bore you with this. You can take a look at this, hit pause, do whatever you want, but we're going to skip through these pretty fast. And next guy, okay, Jackson Power Johnson. Okay, earned a 75 as a grade. Six foot three, 328, 32 and a quarter inch reach. This kid plays center on the film I watched. He may be one of the top centers I have watched in a very long time. He does a great job sealing and climbing to the second level. He has good footwork and moves well on tape. He picks up blitzes well, which shows he has good IQ. The only question that could be mentioned is the, that, you know, Oregon gets the ball out so fast that he's not really being tested on long pass protections that you may see sometimes at the next level. But from what I saw, you know, on tape, there's really nothing to complain about. I think he can be a starter day one at the next level. So strengths, right? Seals defenders, right? Which is really good. Again, what does Seals defenders need? Because I didn't explain it the first time, you know. Let's say Jackson, I mean, Jackson Power Johnson is the defensive player and I'm a center and we're running to the right, right this way. And we're trying to open up this hole right here between these two guys. Let's say we are on, you know, this team going that way towards a referee and he's playing defense. If I'm a center and he's lining up right over top of me, you know, in very simple terms, I want to make sure that I can get to this side and seal him off this way, right, and block his body off so that we can open up a huge hole in this gap, right? So I want to do a little step here, seal him off, and drive him that way to the left to open up this hole on the right. The guard would try to seal off the opposite way and block off, and that's how you're going to create a hole right between them two, right into this gap area, which would be huge. So sealing defenders is huge. He does that very well. He climbs to the second level. What does that mean? You know, he may come here, hit this guy, chip him off to the guard, go up to the second level, get a linebacker. He can do that, which a lot of centers, you know, sometimes don't. Sometimes they just stay on the double team or they'll have a guard slide off. He's able to get to the second level a lot which shows that he has great footwork, he moves very well, picks up blitzes, really good in run blocking situations, shows toughness and IQ. The only weakness, as I mentioned, is his long pass protection. I don't know if this guy can hold up for, you know, five seconds if he has to. Now, again, NFL, you know, the ball's out in two and a half to four seconds, you know, but sometimes there is a longer developed play, right? A lot of Oregon, it was a snap, screen pass, snap, screen pass, you know, a little bit of trickeration, you know, jet sweep, jet touch pass, you know, then a long shot. But a lot of times he didn't have to hold up that long. So the question is, can he hold up longer in the NFL? We'll have to wait and see. Didn't really get to see a lot of that in college with Oregon, but I think that this guy is truly one of the best prospects I've watched at the center position in a really long time. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Christian Haynes, 75 as a grade, six foot three, 317, 33 and a half inch reach. Okay. I'll tell you right now, I love this kid. Here are the notes. This kid plays offensive guard from the film I watched. I will tell you this. He may be one of the most polished linemen I have ever watched. He does a great job climbing to the second level and sealing off defenders. He always knows where to go and who to pick up, which shows how good his IQ is. Most guys you watch, you will see them get beat a few times within a game. It is rare to see Haynes get beat. Let me read it again. It is rare to see Haynes get beat. I think he will be a great player at the next level. I absolutely love this tape. You need an offensive lineman, an interior offensive lineman? Hell, Chris Haynes is probably your guy, okay? You need a center? Jackson Power Johnson, probably. You need a you know a little bit of a versatile interior lineman, maybe offensive tackle? Trey Fontenot is your guy. You need an offensive guard? Christian Haynes may just be your guy, okay? Especially if you you know, you know might want to play around with Fontenot maybe being a tackle, maybe. Well, Haynes is your for sure interior offensive lineman, offensive guard guy that's going to dominate, okay? So what are his strengths? He's very polished, maybe the most polished I've watched in a while. Climbs to the second level very, very well. He's able to seal off defenders as well, which is really brilliant. Uh, really good IQ, can pass off defenders, knows who to pick up, can pull and stuff, which really shows you that this guy knows who to go for every single time. Good in pass blocking and run blocking, demonstrates toughness, which I love to see, and he has really good footwork. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. And the best thing about him is, right, there's no weakness listed. So, again, you're getting a really polished guy that I don't feel like truly has a weakness. B-pluses across the board. Here's the next guy. Again, sorry if I butcher the name. Christian Mahogany, okay, under 72 as a grade, okay? What's his 
Size, six foot three, three fourteen, thirty-three and a half inch reach. How does that compare to Christian Haynes? Well, same height, three pounds lighter, and the same as that reach. So again, these guys' bodies are identical. Okay, but here's where the difference is. Let's listen to what I say in his notes. This kid plays offensive guard on the tape I watched. He seems like a downhill style of a blocker. He really gets good push off the line almost immediately after engaging in his blocks. He is also a brick wall when he gets his hands on the defender in the past game. He also demonstrated multiple successful pole blocks in college. He's not the quickest guy, but he always seems to be the, you know, could get to the right guy. So even though he's not the quickest, when he's polling, he's able to get to the right guy almost every single time. I think he could be a, a really good guard at the next level. So what's the difference? Christian Haynes is a little bit more nimble on his feet, a little bit more agile. I don't really question his quickness. This guy... He is just going to maul you. He's going to plow you to the ground. And, and when he gets his hands on you, he's going to usually win. So what are his strengths? Downhill blocker. He gets great push off the line. Right when he gets off, he'll get a nice pop on that defender, which is nice to see. You know, he's a brick wall. Again, when he gets his hands on, he's not going to let you throw. Good job at pole blocking, although he is not the quickest when he does pulling. So I'd be a little bit nervous about that. But again, he always seemed like on tape, he could get to the right guy. Good on run blocking, pass blocking, and really good IQ. And again, his only weakness that I really saw was that he's not the quickest. At the end of the day, he's not the quickest guy. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that as we go to the next guy. Zach Zenner, okay? Six foot six, 309, 33 and a half inch reach, earned a 72 as a grade. Okay? Zenner. This kid plays offensive guard on the tape I watched. Every time Michigan needed yards, they would run behind him. Whether they would pull him or just run straight behind him, both were their best option to pick up tough yardage. He plays with grit and toughness and will block until the whistle blows, which I love to see. He's a really good as a run blocker and is also pretty dang good in the pass game. I would not say he's the most agile guy, but he can get the job done. He could probably start day one. So what's good about Zach Zenner? Well, this is what's good about the guy. He can pull block, right? He shows good grit and toughness, which, again, I love. In Michigan, man, you want to talk about a gritty and tough offensive line, especially in the run game, that was them. Blocks until the whistle blows, and, again, phenomenal, phenomenal at run blocking. His only weakness to me is that he wasn't really extremely agile, right? He doesn't really have the greatest hips in the world. But, again, he's just going to maul you. He's going to get his hands on you, and he's going to win, okay? He's going to win most of his blocks. If you want to run behind somebody, you run right behind him, and you're probably going to gain yards. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. And the next guy, Zach Frazier, okay? Six foot three, 313, 32 and a quarter inch reach, earned a 70 as a grade, okay? What are his notes? Well, let's see what we got. This kid plays center on the film I watch. When you watch the tape, you see the effort and the grit he plays with. He is quick but does not move great laterally. The biggest issue is that he moves fast, but he does not always get his feet underneath him, so he slips or he gets out of position at times when he goes to the second level. He does a good job in the run and pass game. My favorite part of his game is his toughness, though. He may not always get off the cleanest blocks, and at times he honestly may whip, but the effort and toughness is there okay effort and toughness is there that's all you can truly ask for as a coach right effort grit and toughness and he's quick weaknesses you know sometimes his feet slip which i don't like to see right he needs to work on his footwork a little bit more make sure he gets his feet underneath him and sometimes he's out of position okay and again why because he's slipping around a little bit right he's fast but sometimes you know he, the, the defender shakes him a little bit and he can't be in proper position Things I think you can work on, right? If you got grit, toughness, and effort, I feel like any coach is willing to work with you. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy. Bo Limmer earned a 68 as a grade. Okay, six foot four, 302, 31 and three quarters inch reach. This kid plays center on the film I watched. He may be a little smaller looking than some of the other guys, but I like his toughness and his effort. First, he does a great job climbing to the second level. He is good in both the pass and the run game as well. Not sure whether he'll be drafted, but I liked what I saw from his tape. So this is a guy right lower on most people's boards, but I'm telling you, you're going to see some guys that I have low that are going to be like, how are they that low? 
And it's because, why? what's everyone that's ranked high so far really in, in their notes? Effort, toughness, you know, heart, determination. I will put you higher over a guy that's just lazy and lacks effort. So, you know, if there's a guy missing right now, you got to start questioning if I'm going to say that they have effort or toughness. And we'll see where they'll be at the end of the video, right? So right now, Bo Limmer, again, you know, effort, climbs to the second level really well, and good footwork, and he's a center. So this is a guy, to me, definitely probably going to be a sleeper. I would definitely keep an eye on him, right? There's not any weakness listed because I don't feel like anything's bad. But there's not also a lot of strengths listed. So a lot of it's right in the middle, right? He's a pretty okay run blocker, pretty okay pass blocker. But what he does have is effort. He's able to climb to the second level in good footwork. Doesn't really have a weakness. So I think most coaches can also work with this as well. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy. Delmore Glaze earned a 68% as a grade, meaning he earned 68% of the possible points being able to be earned, which is pretty good. Okay. Six foot four, 315, 34 and three quarter inch reach. What? Let's hear that again. 34 and three quarter inch reach. Now, so far, I talked about. Okay, I just want to make sure I go over this. Troy Fontenu, Jackson Powers Johnson, Christian Haynes, Christian Mahogany, okay, Zach Zinner, Zach Frazier, Bo Limmer, okay, and there's still other guys that we've yet to mention in Layden Robinson, Trevor Keegan, Cooper Beebe, Matt Goncalves, right, uh, Hunter Norzad, uh, Javion Cohen, Andrew Rain, Cedric Van Pran, right, who knows when these guys are going to be called on. But I'll tell you right now, Delmar Glaze, 34 and three-quarter inch reach, the longest arms out of all the interior offensive linemen I scouted. Okay, this dude had long arms, and that's why he was versatile and could play both the inside and the outside at offensive tackle. Okay, so from the film I watched, I actually scouted him as a left tackle. On the tape I watched, he played left tackle. I was impressed by his run blocking, but also his pass blocking ability as a Offensive tackle. He did pretty good as an offensive tackle at pass blocking, which is why, you know, most interior offensive linemen are interior offensive linemen because they're not good pass blockers at offensive tackle. He did pretty good at as a tackle. So that gives me a lot of confidence what he could do inside. If you're a pretty good pass blocker on the outside, hell, you'll probably be a really good pass blocker on the inside. And you know what? His run blocking was pretty damn good. So that gives me confidence. He's going to be a really good run blocker in interior offensive lineman. So he shows me that he could be an emergency tackle if a, need, if a team needs him to be. This versatility is going to be valued at the next level immensely, right? Even if he's not a starter, he will, he will be drafted as a guy that can do both. And if any spot opens up, he can probably do both. I also love this toughness that he demonstrated on almost every single play. So what do I love about this guy, right? A lot's in the middle. No weakness is a lot in the middle. But I'll tell you two things that are strengths. Versatility, which is going to make his draft stock rise, and his toughness, again, which I love. So those two things and everything else in the middle, again, a coach can work with this. I think that he should probably transition to interior offensive linemen. And if a team absolutely needs to play tackle, I feel like he can do the job at least for a game or two. Will he be phenomenal? No. But could he get the job done? For most of the game, probably. So that's Delmar Glaze. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Let me know what you think as we go to the next guy. Layden Robinson, okay, earned a 67 as a grade. Six foot three, 302, 34, and two third inch reach. Again, a guy with pretty long arms, okay? This guy has a pretty good reach. I like that. Um, you know, six foot three, not the biggest guy in the world, but honestly, for a guard, that's about right. Six three, six four, right around where you want to be. Okay, here's his notes. This kid plays guard on the film I watched. I will say something I noticed right away. He fires out of his stance better than anyone I watched so far this year. His original pop on the defender is nice and it's loud. You know, when he pops on, boom, you know, he'll hit you and you feel it. And you know what? It's a really good pop. Coming off the line of scrimmage. He does a good job anchoring down in the pass blocking game. He does occasionally whiff blocks sometimes when he goes second level and they fake him out. He displays toughness and an attitude at times, and I love to see that. I like his effort, but he is not the most polished guy out of the gate. Okay, remember Christian Haynes before when I said he's the most polished guy I've seen? Well, Leighton Robinson is the complete opposite. Okay, and Haynes had the effort and the toughness and everything too, which was why I really love Haynes. 
Robinson is one of the least polished guys, but man, you know, there are some really good traits I love to say. And let's look at the strengths to break these down. Quick out of his stance. You know, right when that ball snaps, boom, he's out. He's going after the guy. And he hits him with a really nice pop. He's the quickest out of the stance out of anybody in this entire draft class. So, again, if you're an offensive line coach, you can work with this guy. He anchors down really well in the pass game. What does anchoring down mean? Well, when someone's, you know, right now this guy is trying to anchor down, not let him through. If you anchor down, you put your feet in the ground. You put usually, you see this hand's on the outside. That's not so good. That might be a holding penalty. You want to get your arms inside, right on the shoulder pad, and you want to just anchor down your feet, your hips, your butt, your, you know, your, you just have everything anchored down, and you're not really moving. You might chop your feet a little bit. You know, you might back up a little bit. Because your main goal is just not to let him get to the quarterback. But ultimately, you're not getting thrown around. You're not getting swung around, thrown to the ground, thrown backwards. You might take an initial pop, but eventually you're going to anchor in the ground. And you're going to just freaking drive him with your hand. And you're going to hold him away. And, you know, you're going to stay engaged the entire time. Again, you can back up. There's no issue with offensive linemen in the pass protection backing up, right? Getting blown back a little bit, backing up, backing up, backing up, as long as you're not falling into your quarterback, okay? What you can't do is just open up a hole, and what you can't do is get thrown to the ground or thrown away so the, edge, the, the defender has a straight path to the quarterback. As long as you have your body between you and the quarterback and the defender, you're in okay shape, okay? But again, anchoring down is even better because you're not really letting them make that, you know, that uh, – progress on the quarterback and he demonstrates toughness right weaknesses he does with occasionally which i really don't like to see i don't like to see just people completely miss and he struggles at the second level and again he usually whiffs when he gets to the second level so here he goes right here right but might pass this guy off here to him and then he might go second level and let's say now that you know he is the defender and my laser pointer is him right he may hit me with a little wiggle move, right? Left, right, right, left, whatever it may be. And hold just full blast, try to hook him or something, and just completely whiff the block. And he's just going to go right and take down the running back. He whiffs too much. He overplays it. He doesn't stay balanced on his feet. He kind of lunges, and he gets out of position. And if a defender just hits him with one move, he just totally whiffs and wails and just kind of falls, which I don't like. But... The, the, the toughness, the effort is there, okay? is there. He wants to play. He wants to be tough. I like seeing the effort. But he does whiff occasionally. And, again, he struggles when he gets to that second level. If he's you no know, double team blocks, will be fine. If you want him to get to the second level, he may struggle. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. The next guy, Trevor Keegan, earned a 67 as a grade. Six foot five, three ten, thirty two and a, uh, a third inch reach, right? Thirty two and a third inch reach for Trevor Keegan. Six five, right? Pretty tall guy. Probably could have been an offensive tackle if he had longer arms. Thirty two and a three a third is not long enough. Let's see what his notes say. This kid played guard on the film I watched. He seems like a mauler to me up front on the offensive line. He is a great run blocker who can pull or just block. Uh, head on so right so he can pull block or he can just block it head on he can also climb to the second level the area he struggles the most is pass blocking where i would say he is slightly below average if he can work on his pass protection his run blocking is good enough to start at the next level okay so this is a guy again that right off the gates you know he can be a run blocker if you need a guy that's just going to block really good in the run game he may be your guy pass protection i don't know if he's going to hold up long term you know like for a well lawn developed play you know, if the play, again, lasts four and a half, five seconds, I don't know if he's going to be able to hold up. You know, he might get beat sometimes at around three and a half seconds. So what are his strengths, right? He molds defenders really good at pole blocking and run blocking in general. Weaknesses in the pass protection, he might, you know, let up a little bit early. Here's his break. Then if you want to take a look at that, you're more than welcome to. Here's the next guy, Cooper Beebe. Okay, under 65 at a gray. Six foot three, 322, 31 and a half inch reach. Here are his notes. This kid plays guard on the film I watched. He has glimpses of good tape, but also some slip-ups, which can get cleaned up at the next level. He played with toughness at times, which I like to see. He does a pretty good job in both the run and pass game. He tries to seal off defenders in the run game. He also can climb to the second level. The only thing that scares me with him is that he does not move too well. He can pull, but he does not have you know really good lateral quickness 
that you want to see, especially when you're pulling. I question his footwork and his lateral quickness a lot. He is good in straight line, but there are too many times I see him whiff. When he properly gets his hands on the defender, he does a pretty dang good job. So he does a really good job at sealing defenders. He can get to that second level. The issue is that he whiffs occasionally. He lacks that lateral quickness and really good footwork. Okay, so again, this is a guy a lot of people are high on Cooper Beebe. I think that's how you pronounce it. Maybe it's Beebe. Um, But this is what I'll tell you, okay? To me, you know, I'm not sure if I want to spend a really high pick on him. Because I feel like there's a lot of areas on this game that are questioned. You know, he is 6'3", 322. 322 is a good size. 6'3", is right around where you want to be. 31 and a half inch reach. That's kind of a little bit of short arms compared to a lot of the other guys. I mean, you got some guys in the trap that are 34, 33. He may actually, I'm looking at it right now, he may have, he has the second or third shortest arms out of everybody I watch as the interior offensive lineman. I just don't know how much I love this guy. And I, I definitely wouldn't put him as my number one guy. A lot of people have him as the number one interior offensive lineman. I'll tell you right now, I do not. But he's up there. I mean, he's still going to be good, right? I just don't think he's going to be the best one out of everybody. Okay, so that's Cooper. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, okay, under 63 as a great Matt Goncalves, okay, six foot six, 327. 33 and a quarter inch reach. Again, big guy, right? 6'6", 327, 33 and a quarter inch reach. Big, good size. What do you think he played in college? Well, he played a lot of left tackle, and that's actually where I watch him. So again, versatility, okay? This kid played left tackle on the film I watched, and he did not do a terrible job. It is tough to tell some of his abilities at guard because I was not able to see it. Here's what I will say. He is a big guy that will probably be better suited at guard. He seems to be a solid pass blocker, but he did struggle in some run blocking at offensive tackle. When he becomes a guard, he may be able to he may be better at run blocking because he will be forced to be in the trenches. He has the ability, you know, he has the ability and some versatility that teams may just be looking for. So he has the ability and some versatility that teams are gonna probably take a shot on this guy. I mean, look at him. He's a large guy. Large guy. Okay. Big. Long arms, 327, six foot six. Okay. You convert him to guard. He's going to be really big, can be versatile. Probably won't. Let me check that. Won't be a starter, in my opinion, day one. Won't be. But long term, you know, emergency offensive tackle or a fill in that guard, he could be that guy. And again, I think he'd be a really good guard at the next level. Hell, he may be a starting offensive tackle eventually at the next level. He can do a little bit of everything. I just don't know how good he is going to be at guard because it was tough to see him on tape. Now, usually pretty good offensive tackles can be really good guards. Okay, but some guys just never make that transition. I mean, again, you see someone like Evan Neal, we all say he would probably be a really good guard. But why isn't he making that transition? Something that the Giants are seeing that he's not able to do. So what are his strengths, right? Versatility can play interior and as an offensive tackle. And his weaknesses, again, wasn't a great run blocker as an offensive tackle. That doesn't mean he's going to lack run blocking as a guard. I think, honestly, once he transitions there, a lot of this will be cleaned up. And toughness, I didn't see toughness from him. I like when people block until that whistle blows. I like when people, you know, are pushing someone into their ground. Pancake block, something. I didn't see any toughness from him on the tape I watched. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Cedric Van Pran. Earned a 62 as a great. You guys are like, what the hell? How's he so low? Maybe he's not this low on my personal analysis. You have to wait until the end, but I'll tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Six foot four, 298, 31 in the third inch reach. I could be wrong, but I was right about Alex Leatherwood. I was right about, you know, a lot of these guys that get this, uh, get these write ups. It's unfortunate. This kid is a center from the tape I watched. I had some question marks to consider before I would draft him. He seems to get blown back too much in the past game, which concerns me. There are also too many times on tape I see him being too lazy and not playing until the whistle blows. There were a few plays I saw some toughness and maybe even some nastiness on tape, which I love to see, but it was far and few between. He's an okay downhill run blocker, but I do not trust his footwork enough to get him in open space. He does a decent job in the screen game, but I'm not comfortable starting this guy right away on my football team, especially at the center position. Okay, six foot four, two ninety eight, thirty one and a third inch reach. All right, let's start with this. Six foot four is pretty good height. 
298. He is the lightest guy out of all the interior linemen that we talked about. Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear. Make sure I fact check that, which is true. From the guys that I'm going to be talking about today, he is. 31 and a third inch reach. Again, the small, shortest arms in the entire draft. Right behind Cooper. Okay. He is the shortest arm. So he's the smallest weight wise. He has the shortest arms and his tape wasn't pretty. That's not a good uh, trio right there. So his strengths, nothing really stood out to me. There's not a single damn thing about this guy that stood out to me, which is concerning. Weaknesses. Gets blown back in the pass game. He's lazy as he quits on plays. Doesn't have great footwork. Doesn't have great IQ and not a great pass blocker. I think, honestly, the best thing for this kid could be that either A, he goes to a team that really needs a center, and they start him, and somehow he figures it out, or he gets really good with the offensive line coach, and they and they coach him up. Or B, he converts to offensive guard, and hopefully that would fix some of these things. Because I, I don't think he can play center at the next level. He struggled too much as, to me, he struggled too much in Georgia, at least this year, as a center. And I, I, I'm not, I would, but hell no, I'm not drafting him as to be my center. Hell no. I don't think I'm drafting him to be my damn guard. I'm going to be honest with you. This is a guy that I'm letting fall. I don't care if it's a fourth round. I don't think I'm, I'd rather take someone with heart than that's freaking lazy. And I know that this guy's had a big name now for years. Okay. But what I watched was abysmal. And I'm going to be just brutally honest. I said the same thing about Leatherwood and I was right. Sorry, I had to take a sip of my coffee right there. My throat's a little dry. These videos are long, man. A lot of talking. Here's his breakdown. You're more than to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Andrew Rain. Okay, under 62 as a grade. Uh, 6'4", 314, 32 and a half inch reach. This kid is the center on the tape I watched. There are some bright spots on the film that I was able to see. First, he does a good job getting his body in the proper position to seal off the fenders. He also shows the ability to climb to the second level. He is not the best at staying engaged with his blocks. He gets shed off of pretty easily. He also gets thrown around a little bit, which makes me question his strength right now. Long term, if he continues to lift, get stronger, and work on some of his technique, there's no reason he cannot be a starter in a few seasons. I would not be shocked to see a position change from center to guard, and some of these issues disappear pretty quickly. So again, a guy that he had some issues, but if he just transitions to guard, I feel like a lot of those issues may just go away. His strengths, right? He does get his body in proper position to seal off the fenders, and he climbs to the second level pretty dang well. His weaknesses, right? He struggles staying engaged. Uh, he gets shed off pretty dang easily. He gets thrown around too much, which I don't like to see. Toughness isn't really demonstrated on tape. Pass blocking, not so much in IQ. Again, the main thing here for him is, is that, you know, you, you can't really struggle staying. When you get engaged with somebody, you can't just get shed off too easily. And he does just that, okay? And he needs to make sure he stays engaged. And, you know, with his proper body positioning, he needs to make sure that he's able to hold on to the defender and keep them sealed off and stay engaged and not just be shut off too easily. Or else getting your body in great position doesn't really do anything, okay? But again, I think if he goes from center to guard, a lot of this would get cleaned up. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Javion Cohen, earned a 57 as his great. Six foot four, 324. 34 inch reach. Long arms. Long arms for a guard. And he played guard on the tape I watched. Big guy. Big guy. 324. I want to make sure I make that clear. Uh, you know, besides Matt Gonkovs and Jackson Powers Johnson, he is the heaviest in the draft class at the interior offensive lineman perspective that I scouted. That I scouted. So he's a big guy with long arms. Okay, you got to like that, but the issue is the tape. Here's the tape. This kid plays off as a guard on the tape I watched. There's some hope with him, but I actually had to turn off his film after a while because I was becoming way too frustrated. He just whips way too much. I do not see the effort needed to make up for the lack of talent. Could he pan out? Yes. Would I spend an early pick on him? Absolutely not. Only time will tell. Th those are my notes. Very short and sweet because I, I hated it. I hated it. I thought it was the hype of laziness. You have this size. You're six foot four, 324, 34 inch reach. And I've heard some pretty good reports about Javion Cohen. I was excited to go watch him, and I just saw laziness. I saw a guy that has everything you could be to be, hell, a franchise offensive tackle. 
And I don't think that he's a starting offensive guard. Now, I could be totally wrong about this guy. He has a size. He has potential because of that size. And maybe if he gets with the right coach, he can clean all this up and become a good starter in the National Football League. I just had to turn off his film. Maybe it was too fast. I watched it about five minutes. I had to turn it off because, ah, gosh, it was just bad. Strengths, none. A lot of in between, but really weaknesses. He whiffs too much, right? No effort to me. Lazy. Run blocking below average. Path blocking below average. IQ doesn't really see stunts. Can't pick those things up. Didn't see toughness, right? Again, I, I, if I'm not going to see you be a great blocker, I at least want to see toughness and effort and, you know, being a workhorse. He's none of that. And footwork was lazadaisical too. So this is a guy that, uh, if, you know, if you have him high on your board, I'm telling you, I would at least raise a few red flags and maybe we can watch tape together and you show me what you like about him because I'll at least be able to demonstrate a few things that I don't like. Here's his breakdown. You meant more to take a look at that. And the last guy, okay, under the 57 as a grade, Hunter Norzad, okay, six foot three, 317, earned a 33 inch, and had a 33 inch reach. Here's his notes this kid plays center on the film I watch. He does not stay engaged with his blocks long enough, which is concerning, especially at the next level. He ends up on the ground too much as well and seems to get blown back too much in the pass game. Was not very impressed with his tape, but with work over a few years, uh, anything is possible. So, again, this is a guy that. You know, when when you're talking about the top of the draft, right, a lot of you have some weaknesses. But to be fair, when I consider some of those weaknesses weaknesses, well, hell, then this guy has a ton of weaknesses, right? And and it's just, I don't even know if I would say that they're weaknesses because, again, like, if I list everything as a weakness, which I am for some of these guys, then, hell, seventh-round draft picks are super, super weaknesses, you know? So, again, this these guys are going to get drafted probably fourth, third, fourth, fifth, sixth round. But compared to the top guys, all of these are weaknesses. All of these are weaknesses, okay? Struggles staying engaged with his blockers, ends up on the ground too much, It's blown back too much in the pass game, not a phenomenal run or pass blocker for that matter, lacks toughness, you know, doesn't really demonstrate the good IQ with, you know, blitz protection or, you know, pickups or stunts, ain't able to read it, and not great footwork. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. All right, so according to the rate scale, this was the ranking, right? That's the order we just went over. So Troy Fatnu, number one, uh, Jackson Power Jonathan, two, Christian Haynes, three, Christian Mahogany, four, Zach Center, five, Zach Frazier, six, Bo Lim Limmer, seven, Delmar Glaze, eight, Robinson, nine, Keegan, ten, Beeb, eleven, Van Pran, twelve, Goncalves, thirteen, Rain, fourteen, Javion Cohen, fifteen, and Hunter Norzad, sixteen. According to the grade scale. Now, that's what the grade scale says. That's not my personal analysis, but according to the grade scale. Now, let's break this down a little bit further. Offensive guard specifically, okay, as a guard. The grade scale has it as this. Fotnew, one. Haynes, two. Mahogany, three. Zinner, four. Glaze, five. Robinson, six. Keegan, seven. Beeb, eight. Goncalves, nine. Cohen, ten. Okay, those are your top ten offensive guards ranked. As a guard, according to the grade scale, not what I believe, but what the grade scale, the unbiased grade scale says. 2024 center rankings, according to the grade scale, okay? Has it Jackson Power Johnson, one, Zach Frazier, two, Bo Limmer, three, Sedgwick Van Pram, four, Andrew Rain, five, Hunter Nordzad, six. According to the grade scale, these are the top six as a center. So if your team needs a center specifically, this might be what you want. If you need a guard specifically, the other one might be what you want. Now my personal analysis. This is my personal ranking as of right now. Interior offense lineman ranking, my personal analysis. So here is a ranking how I put everybody on the silver platter and how I would draft them. Okay, now again, according to the position, if you need a certain position, you might draft someone over someone. If you need a center, right, you might draft Jackson Power Johnson over Fontenot, right? If you want someone that might play tackle, you're going to draft Fontenot over Haynes. If you draft a guard, you might draft Haynes over Fontenot, right? It depends. But according, if you had to put them all on a platter, my power rankings for interior offense line is accordingly. Botanu 1, Haynes 2, Power Johnson 3, Zittner 4, Mahogany 5, Frazier 6, Beeb 7, Limmer 8, Van Pran 9, Glaze 10, Robinson 11, Kagan 12, Goncalves 13, Rain 14, Cohen 15, Norzad 16. Now per position. Guard, okay, if you need a guard, this is the order I would go in. Fontenot 1, Haynes 2, Zittner 3, Mahogany 4, Beeb 5, Glaze 6, Robinson 7, Keegan 8, Goncalves 9, and Cohen 10. And last but not least, center. 
Powers Johnson one, Fraser two, Limmer three, Van Pran four, Rame five, and Hunter Norzad six. Okay, those are my rankings. Now let's go to the fan questions. All right, the first question. First time I'm even looking at these. How does this draft rank for interior offensive linemen compared to other drafts? Well, according to my grade scale, fast math. Let me just look through my notes real fast. Um, 2021. I'm going to say top of the draft, right? So according to my grade scale, I'm going to say they earned a 70 or higher. 2021, there was two guys that graded over a 70 or higher, and the top guy was a 75. So that was two. In 2022, there was one, two, three, four guys. And the highest was a 75. In 2023, there was four guys. Highest guy was a 77. And this year, there's five guys, and the highest is a 77. So how does this draft rank for interior office linemen compared to other drafts? Well, just looking at my grade scale alone, I would say it's slightly better, right? In 2021, I only had two guys. The last two years, I've had four guys in both. This year, I have five. So it's slightly better. I would feel like there's more guys that I would draft here. And the highest guy is a 77, which is tied for last year, who was Osiris Torrance. Uh, this year is a 77 as well with Troy Fontenot. And I, I truly do believe that this year, if you need an interior offensive lineman, this is a year to go get one. There's a bunch of guys, especially centers, too, that are, you know, like I Jackson Power Johnson is one of my favorite centers I've ever watched. So he's a brilliant name to bring in and draft. And man, there's a little bit of everything. I mean, there's guards that could possibly play tackle if you want an emergency guy in Fontenot and some other guys down the line a little bit. And there's some other guys down there that are just really good guards, like Christian Haynes, that Again, I would be willing to spend a pretty high draft pick on. Next question and last question. How many of these guys would you take in the first round? Well, if I'm being perfectly honest, if your team absolutely needs an offense alignment, if you truly need Jackson Powers Johnson, I would take him the first round. He's a first round talent center. There is no doubt in my mind he will be a starter at the next level. Troy Fontenot is an absolute starting guard at the next level, could even potentially start at offensive tackle. So there's two. And after those two, I mean, for me, Christian Haynes is a home run waiting to be hit out of the ballpark. I, I would take him. And look, if you really need one, I would take him in the 20s. You know what I mean? Like, hell, I would even pay, maybe take him around 18, 19 if you absolutely need him. He is so freaking polished that you are getting a future franchise offensive guard. I don't know if he'll be there in the late 20s. So if I'm being perfectly honest, if I'm a GM and I really need a guard and that's my number one need, and you know, I don't know if I'm trading down. At 18-ish, I may have to grab him. It, look, because once the top guys go, I mean, there's some guys that, like I said, they're plug-and-play maybe guys. Oh, this guy's a good run blocker. But hell, those top three guys are freaking phenomenal. And I just gave you an offensive guard slash offensive tackle versatile guy in Fontenot, a starting center in Jackson Powers Johnson, and an awesome freaking guard in, in Christian Haynes. And those three to me, I would all take in the first round. I, I, I could see a team taking those three guys in the first round. And I, I would consider it. So how many of these guys would you take? Those three. After that, for me, you know, I got some guys that, aren't really popular, and you may see them go in the second, third round, but may, some may be in the fourth round. Some of my top guys may go in the fourth round, but I would not be willing to spend a first round on any of those other guys, right? The Zach Zinners, the Christian Mahogany, those are guys that have a lot to do. Like, they have a lot to grow. They have a lot of room to grow, but I do see potential in those guys, too. I mean, hell, they could end up being the top guy in the draft, but it's not popular consensus. So three guys that I have a first round rate on, in my opinion, would be those three. So I have five guys that are 70 and higher, three of which I would take in the first round. And those are, one more time, Fatanu, Jackson Powers Johnson, and Christian Haynes. That's all for me. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment in the comment section below so I can get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I did an interior offensive lineman before I did wide receivers, running backs, and everything else, other uh, special groups, because I still want to make sure we get Zach Pine and stuff for their pro days because... A lot of people didn't even measure. Like Malik Neighbors never measured him at the combine, and he never ran a 40. So I would like to see if I can get official numbers on him before I do their video. So next video will be offensive tackles. 
Then we'll go back. We'll do running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. Then we'll go to the defense side of the ball before the NFL draft. See you guys soon. Peace. We are built better. What, Eddie? What, Eddie, sir?